In this short video, we're going to review linear systems of differential equations, but from a different point of view, where we use matrix notation. So we've seen a linear system of differential equations before. So we have, in this case, three unknown functions, x1, x2, and x3. All of them depend on t. And then we have these three differential equations, which involve all of the functions with some coefficient functions, depending on t as well. And then if it's non-homogeneous, then we also have these right-hand side functions. So we can write this in matrix form. So we're going to actually define matrices and vectors. We're going to consider those the same thing if it's a column vector or column matrix. Uh, I am going to use arrows to denote uh, vectors because we use uppercase letters for many different things like uh, the Laplace transform. And so to distinguish the uppercase letter, which would be a Laplace transform from the uppercase letter, which represents a vector, I'm going to put an arrow over the vectors. The matrix, I'm just going to use uh, the uppercase letter. I think it will be clear from the context uh, when we're looking at a matrix. So all of the entries of these vectors or matrices are indeed functions. However, in our study, almost all the time, uh, these uh, will be functions which are constant numbers. So we have constant coefficients in our differential equations. So in matrix form, we can write the non-homogeneous equation as the vector x prime equals matrix A times vector x plus vector f. So it's a very compact way. And then uh, for the homogeneous, uh, we just don't have the f vector. So let's practice this. We're going to write this system of equations in matrix form. So the dx uh, dt, that is the derivative of x. dy dt is the derivative of y. So our vector uppercase x is going to have entries x and y. So it's understood that these are functions x of t and y of t. The derivative then, I could think of it as dx dt uh, and dy dt. Uh, and then my coefficients, well, that's just the, again, the coefficient on x and y in that order. And so we get this matrix of constant entries. We could also write x prime as having entries x prime and y prime. It fits a little bit better as long as we understand that the independent variable is t. And so here then we have capital X prime equals A times capital X. So if we have an initial value problem, uh, which we've written in matrix form here, and then we can also write the initial condition in matrix form, then if all of our functions, remember all of the entries of X, a and f are functions of t if they're continuous on a common interval that contain, contains uh, t naught, where we have our initial value, then we'll have a unique solution to this initial value problem. Uh, just like we had before with superposition of function solutions for vector solutions, we also have a superposition principle and that makes sense because remember all of the entries in our vector solutions, our x solutions, they're just uh, functions of t. And so if the superposition principle holds for each entry, it will also hold for the vectors as a whole. All right, let's review the notion of linear dependent. If you have a set of vectors, it's linearly dependent. If you can find a linear combination, a non-trivial linear combination, which equals zero, which means that you're going to find 
some coefficients c1 through ck which are not all zero some of them may be zero but at least one must not be zero where if you take this linear combination then you get the zero vector so uh, again we're adding vectors together the output should be another vector so a zero with a arrow over it indicates that it's a zero vector and of course if a set is not linearly dependent then it's linearly independent which means that the only solution to a linear combination of the vectors equaling zero is when all of the coefficients equal zero and here's another look at the Ronskian. This is a little bit different from what we looked at before, so don't skip this slide. Uh, if we have, for example, three solution vectors with three components, then we can put the solution vector entries as the columns of our determinant. And that's what we call the Ronskian for our system. And so if the Ronskian is not zero, then the set is linearly independent. And it works the other way as well. If it's you have a linearly independent set, then the Ronskian cannot be zero. So here's an example. Let's, we're given two solutions uh, to a system of linear differential equations. And we'd like to verify that they are indeed solutions and that they're linearly independent. So we're going to do this using matrices and vectors, not writing it out term by term. And so uh, the left hand side says x prime. So if I take x1 prime, well, I can just keep this vector, the one negative one vector. That's a scalar multiplier. Well, it's not a scalar. It's a constant vector multiplier. Then all I need to do is take the derivative of e to the negative 2t, which will give me negative 2 times e to the negative 2t. Now I can bring the negative 2 inside the vector. So I multiply each one of the entries there, or components of the vector, by negative 2. And now let's look at the right-hand side. The right-hand side of my equation, remember, is this A matrix times X. So let's take the 1, 3, 5, 3 matrix, multiply it times the X1. So that's the vector 1, negative 1, and that gets multiplied by E to the negative 2T. And when I do that, I get a vector negative 2, 2 times e to the negative 2t. And that's exactly what I got on the left hand side after taking the derivative. So therefore, I've verified that that vector x1 is a solution to the system of equations. And I'll do the same type of thing with vector x2. I'll look at the left hand side, which says I need to take the derivative of x2 prime. So I just keep the vector which contains constants, and then take the derivative of e to the 6t. And go ahead and multiply this 6 times the vector to get a new vector with components 18 and 30. And then on the right-hand side, I'll take my coefficient matrix, multiply it times the solution x2, and I get the same vector multiplied times e to the 6t. So we verified that these solutions satisfy the given differential equation. But now we still have to show that they are linearly independent, and we will use the Ronskian. So I'll go ahead and multiply in the actual function part, the e to the negative 2t, into each of the solutions. So then my first column of the Ronskian will be e to the negative 2t and then negative e to the negative 2t. And then the second column would be 3e to the 6t, 5e to the 6t. And then I only need to uh, evaluate that. So again, let me just 
emphasize again the first column came from the first solution the second column came from the second solution and then when I go ahead and uh, evaluate that determinant and collect the like terms I get 8 e to the 4 t and that is always positive for all values of t uh, and so these solutions must be linearly independent. All right, so again, if you have uh, n equations in your system and you have n linearly independent solution vectors, then that set is called a fundamental set. Um, and here's a fact for you. If you have a unique solution, so we saw that under the conditions where we had continuous functions uh, on a common interval, at least for the initial value problem, then um, our differential equation then has a fundamental set of solution vectors. So then uh, just as we, we had when we just looked at uh, single functions as solutions, when we look at vectors of functions, we have the same notion of a general solution, which would be called a complementary solution. And I can see that I knew I would forget at least one arrow. So let me get the arrow here. If we have a non-homogeneous um, equation, then if you, you have a particular solution which satisfies the DE and it's free of parameters, that is the particular solution. And then your general solution then would be the sum of the complementary solution and the particular solution. 